um, for my sins. So yeah, I mean, I, I, my my background is tax and accounting, um, and then about twenty years ago, I moved into the software industry doing tax and accounting software. Mm-hmm. Well, twenty five years ago, probably now. Um, from training and technical support to testing and development. And then about a dozen years ago, I left and set up my own business. Um, so yeah, that's what I do now. Just run my own business doing um, consulting and technical stuff for software companies and big firms of accountants. Very, very interesting. Not. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit boring, really. It's just tax, tax and accounting language. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, and then... Um, and as far as crypto, I remember back, it must have been before I left and set up my own company, we used to mess about with Bitcoin when you used to be able to mine it on browsers. So we're probably talking about 2011. Mm-hmm. So there's probably some old stock of computers at my old company that has, might have a half a dozen Bitcoin on. You never know. <laughs> Somewhere. Because <laughs> we'd like to say we, we weren't taking it seriously because it was only like it was probably a dollar's worth or two dollars worth at the time or whatever um so yeah that was my i think that was my first sort of dip into crypto and then setting up your own business and everything that comes with that you kind of push things to one side about five years ago uh sort of came back in but yeah i think it was i think at the time all we could purchase and we had to convert pound sterling to euros and then you could purchase Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin. I think those were the only three we could purchase at the time. So I bought a bit of each, mm-hmm. left it there. Again, wasn't that exciting at the time. And then about three years ago, uh, I had some funds I wanted to try and invest somewhere. And I was like, I don't know what to do. So I was having a look around. I think this was about December 2020 or something. And then in January, and I was like looking at crypto again. I thought, well, it's definitely going to grow. It's not going to shrink crypto. So I thought I'll, I'll do some investigating and Coinbase at the time was doing me head in because you had to convert to euro. So G- Gemini was available in the UK. So I went on Gemini. Right. There were hardly any. I mean, there was probably 15 or so, 20 max tokens you could buy through Gemini at the time. Mm. Um, so I went to each one and just had a look and then I thought, oh, what's this um this looks good and then uh, the more i read into it with regards to flex uh, i thought yeah that makes sense to me um what they're trying to do i mean it's people moan about it but what they're actually trying to do is just astronomical to be honest <laughs> um, but um to see a value come into the sort of crypto space from an external source from an everyday use so it's not you know a meme sort of yeah <laughs> everyone piles in and it, 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 it that's kind of i, I won't say it's a pun it's like a pyramid scheme into some some things where you sure. need people to come in at the bottom to buy to make your bags go up yeah. and stuff like that so if you've got revenue coming in and the revenues go into the token value then you don't have to, you, you know you don't have any, other people don't need to buy it once it gets going and things like that. So that that stuck out for me. Uh, so yeah, bought a load beginning of January or end of January 21. To be honest, yeah, I, I, I sort of carried on buying up until probably a month before it went on Coinbase. Once it went on Coinbase, I'd, I'd, I'd not bought any more until sort start again this year so i started seeing what was coming what they were doing the new ampere stuff thought actually yeah again that makes sense to me so why wouldn't i invest in it so so i started uh tripling quadrupling my uh, initial goal <laughs> throughout uh-huh. the year so yeah just keep like every day i'm like when we somebody will send me some money that they owe me or you know is oh yeah it's whatever and i'm like i'll paypal it yeah so i can just buy it straight from paypal through coinbase so i just I, that's all i do i just go yeah yeah and i'm like it's just small amounts of money that people are sending me i'm like actually that's more than when i, I was buying back then like with a thousand pounds and stuff like that so you think well yeah yeah so you just keep adding to it don't you so 
Um, and then obviously get it all. I mean, all mine staked, I think. Yeah, I think it is all staked at the moment. So you don't even have to worry, you know, you earn an extra amp whilst you sleep, aren't you? So, or not sleep if, if we're talking about you. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes like, I say, I want to do it post it at that time. Surely it's like four in the morning or something. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> so that's me. That's me. Um, but yeah. Uh, I, you know, I try. I, I'm not. I'm not mega um, active on socials. I chirp in now and again. I'll retweet if I see something good, or if I find a bit of information, I'll send it out. But mm -hmm. I'm not. A, um, you know. All, uh, yeah, I do have other other stuff to do. <laughs> I have a granddaughter that we look after every now and again, so she takes up a, a heck of a lot of time. So. I mean, being able to juggle all that, you got your own business, you have family and, you know, the community involvement for sure. I, I mean, I remember back, it was, I think it was August or, or maybe, no, no, it was before August. It was, um, it was at least March or April, I think, when like you first initially posted something about like, you know, spending or doing something with the spending app and then, um, feel like you like offered like a reimbursement or yeah something with love potion i think yeah yeah that uh just to see how many i'm you know spending it one one of each of the ones he can spend on there i know this however, however many more so i thought i'll do that you know i can't i can't spend them over in this country so but you know i can send 20 dollars somebody to go and get a cup or something like that then if yeah. they stick a video up then that's great <laughs> I'm just curious, like, why did you, um, why did you want to support it so much though? Like to do that, to like offer to do that. Okay. Well, the way I'm, you probably see from, I mean, if you looked at everything that I put out on post, I don't, I'm not one of these people that say, oh, go and buy AMP, go and buy AMP. This, you know, why, why are they not telling people to buy AMP? Mm -hmm. I don't, it's, and even initially when I first bought it, people asked me, oh, what, you know, what's this, what's that? I said, well, I've bought it. You know, I'm not telling you to buy it. It's up to you if you want to buy it. You know, what can happen and everything else. The bit that's more, um, sits better with me is go and use Flexer. Because then that helps. Obviously, it helps AMP. Well, we'll do when, you know, the switch is flipped or whatever we want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm quite comfortable, you know, if it's in this country, I'd probably put something together and say, look, you know, send me the uh, a little video or something the best like you the best one will reimburse you or whatever you know that that's i'm fine doing that yeah that's i mean it's incredibly generous and it really does help like um like you're, you're contributing behind the scenes which i think is kind of i don't know it's unique and it's really neat to see that rather than like like you said the latter which is like oh go and buy this go and do this and yeah so it's it's nice that like uh that there are individuals like yourself that come out um and uh if they feel like they can't do something or if they don't want to do something or you know whatever the reason might be it's oh. still really nice to uh to know that there's community members like you who believe in the project enough to like go out of your way to have an offline conversation to like support it in your own way and uh so I, I thought that was really, really, really neat and like very generous of you again. Yeah, no, that's fine. Like I say, I can't, we can't do it here. So, you know, if I went to, well, I suppose our version of it is Costa. Uh, we do have Starbucks, but I prefer Costa. You know, <laughs> it, cost, cost, it cost me 20 pounds for it to Costa and bought two coffees and two cakes or whatever. So, you know, it's, yeah, I can send that out for that's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Very cool. So it started off. Uh, mining it from mining Bitcoin from the beginning, and then as um, some platforms became available, got a, a few new tokens available for you guys to to kind of access over there or to uh, to to contribute towards different projects. Maybe appreciate the potential of what you saw in Flexa. And yes, made yeah. a little bit more sense to you in terms of like practical everyday use and the fact that it inherently adds value to itself when it is used yeah um that's that's a good feel like that's a really good point like um i don't think anyone's ever really framed it exactly like that because then you don't have to rely on on people buying or selling as much because no. 
the more it's used, the, the more it's used. It's yeah, and the the usage isn't from you know us crypto Twitter <laughs> folk, you know, doing stuff. You know, once once they they are going where they say they're going, mm -hmm. and it's just everyday general and. You know, I'll just be like before. You know, do you want to pay? I suppose in, over in the states, what is, is it Venmo? Yeah, is it Venmo? Right. Yes. Yeah, some like that, or is, is I try to think what the the thing like cash apps and things like that. I suppose that's sending money between people. But mm -hmm. if you're paying for stuff with stuff like PayPal, you know, twenty years ago, what was PayPal? Yeah. So, um, and the merchant's going to like flex a lot more if it's a lot cheaper for them. So we might see a, a bit more sort of gradual and then you know slow 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 at start and then it'll sort of take off and i understand how flex are doing it and they're doing it small and they're making sure everything works they've obviously got the stuff with the um concerns of uh gensler and his mob over there um which has been a bit of a bit of a big backward step but um yeah once <laughs> Once they, they're happy with it, you know, they might bring some small wallets on, like night. You know, people say, "Well, night talk wallets only got two thousand followers." But it, that's not that's not the point. It doesn't matter. It, it's the proof of concept that right, we've gone from Spedden to a third party app, and then that's working. You know, we, we're we're not really controlling the app, but we're controlling the the sort of SDK is what happens when we get third party to use it. If that then works, then you brought it out to bigger ones and bigger ones and bigger ones. You know, the banks and if the banks would be using Flexer for their apps, they would want it to be, you know, a bit more used and a bit more battle tested before they go, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> we'll stick we'll stick our bank app straight through Flexer without really seeing any metrics of what it can do. And, you know, it, it's not what it can do, it's what happens when it can't do it. That's the, mm -hmm. the thing they'll be looking for. That's right. Yeah. Needs to be kind of battle tested and tried yeah. out, and um, I, I totally agree with you. Like the banks would see absolute value in this because of the the amount of fraud that they see, even with their um, with like ACH payments, yeah, um, direct deposits, um, and then even with their their Zelle, their peer to peer payment platform. Yeah, there's been a tremendous amount of fraud there, and it was designed to be fraud proof. So it's 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 interesting that there's um you know that issue still exists for them. Um, yeah. So I can I completely agree with you there. Yeah. I mean I'm a bit like I said, I'm a bit more old school, so I just I, I use the banking apps. I mean I use Apple Pay and we have a oh what's the is it is it Fed now you've just got over there? Oh yeah, the Fed now. That's something like new and in the works that they're developing. Yeah. yeah. We've had that over here for a similar thing over here for years it's yeah. it's i mean if i if i just go on my app and say right i want to pay x person or y person i can put their bank account details in it checks that the account details are correct and then it'll just send them the money straight away and like i said we've had that for like a dozen years um How and i was going oh no it'll it'll yeah. ruin flex or it'll ruin visa i'm like no nobody even nobody even sees it as something that you go into the shop and pay with mm -hmm. that's not what it's for mm -hmm. You know, you think a half trillion company like Visa would let a bank to bank peer network ruin their complete business. You know, <laughs> you've got like 200,000 employees and it's like, oh, well, they've created this link that sends money from one place to another. We're finished. No, they're not. <laughs> people, don't, people don't do that. They still use the cards. They still use the wraps and tap to pay and whatever else. I mean, the other thing I've seen over here is the QR codes. We do use QR codes for quite a lot of things, and a lot of these, like um, small, I want to say small, they're not small. I mean, you've got KFC and Costa and mm -hmm. Nando's and places like that um, that you do use the QR codes, not necessarily for payments, but for like, oh, this is my account, I want my rewards, or I'm using my rewards, here's my QR mm -hmm. code. And the good thing is, I mean, I've probably posted this somewhere. Um, if I go into Costa and they have like, they have like little coffee mornings, and it's like all the, old age pensioners who sit around and talk and have coffees in the mid midweek, you know, at like sort of 11 o'clock in the morning. And they're all there with the QR codes, getting them scanned. If, if, if it's something that saves them a penny, they all use the QR code. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, as a new technology, if you've got a shop and you're saying, well, we'll use flex of QR codes and you get 1% off, 
the old people will be the first in the queue, saving the one percent. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you know it's exciting uh looking forward to what i mean we're getting near the end of the year now i'm not expecting a great deal you know we've got flex the same we've got some q4 information we've got the 12 we may have a rerun of the 12 days of flex or, or something similar sure. i know they like to throw something out that time of year um but i think yeah q1 probably we'll see a lot more momentum so I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to get to the end of the year and go. Eh, 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 we've not got anything. <laughs> That's. I know how. I know how things work <laughs> in the real world. <laughs> you've been. You've been watching the game, playing the game for for yeah. you know yeah. some time. Yeah, you know how it operates. <laughs> yeah, I think we had our first. Uh, we'll pick this up again in January. <laughs> sort of right. message the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all winding down for Christmas end of year now. So, <laughs> but yeah, cool. Uh, so yeah, I mean, sorry, I've, I've waffled on there for ages. Do you want any, I know you'd sent me some, some general questions that you, you yeah. thought we could touch on. Um, I think like, I'll, I love the organic conversation a lot more yeah. than, um, you know, going on like a script type of thing. So this is <laughs> oh, absolutely right. wonderful. Um, I'll just pick any out. Like I said, I've just I've literally just gone through this morning with my morning coffee and just wrote down a few thoughts on each one. So you'd yeah. have to in order, just just fire them off, whatever. Thank you, thank you. Um, I think I would uh, like to touch on a little bit of like what governance, um, like what it means to you, and then how you feel about it or how you feel about governance, like the new addition, the additional like um, I guess benefit or incentive for for being an amp holder or staking. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, what are your thoughts there? Um, I mean, yeah, the, the, with regards to the empire, then the governance. Um, I mean, you feel like you do have a bit of a say. I mean, depending on um, what your holdings are, I suppose. I don't know how they're gonna they're gonna run it. Whether it'll just be how many um, tokens you hold. They could. There's, I suppose there's a few different ways you could do it. You could sort of limit. You know, you might hold. You might you might hold two billion amp but you know if you're doing a vote then you're just you're just limited to say i don't know 500 million or whatever i don't know you, you could you could throttle it so you know you haven't just got one huge account that just says yes or no and that's it then you're not yeah although right. it's nice to vote you're not actually doing any yeah so that might might need looking at i don't know what other communities have done along that um but i think yeah i mean governance is it's more like it's a bit like a, a sounding board as well. I suppose you can put your own proposals together and forward, or ideas. I suppose not proposal uh, to, to actually vote. I suppose there would be some sort of limit, like we've had in the past, that you know you need a billion tokens to put put something up to vote, but you can still put ideas forward. And then if we could, if some of these ideas are good, then we can put those forward as a as a community mm -hmm. and get those voted on. Yeah, I mean, it, it keeps people a bit more focused, doesn't it? I know we've kind of done it in the past with Flexor, but I understand why Flexor had sort of retreated back into the shell and gone off and done other th stuff. Um, they want to see, I suppose they want to see a, a sort of gap between Flexor and, and Ampera, so, mm -hmm. which is fine. Yeah, that's, you know, I probably would have done the same, so. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy, happy going forward in the governance. I, I don't know what value, additional value, is being thought of for holding amp through ampera there might be some i don't know it, you, you know there are there are certain protocols out there that um just run with it as a governance token and that's it so as a not-for-profit organization where do the profits go then <laughs> do we just keep on recycling and then just send it back out to other projects to build on top that then has some feedback to the AMP token somehow. So then you're sort of an extra step away. It's not then the Ampera that's creating the value. It's these other satellite projects that come off there that have been funded through Ampera. Yeah, anyway, it, it gets a bit messy, but yeah, no, you know, right. the, the, it's, it's kind the, of the, the further you get away, then the less they're going, oh, well, yeah, you're getting money from that. No, we're not. <laughs> It's, it's kind of similar, I think, like, um, like what you're describing kind of reminds me of um, optimism, I think, like, because yeah. they'll pull, like, a lot of funds into their treasury, which they can't really access too much, but what they can do is they can take that and, like, 
put, you know, and they, they put a lot of money up, like um, X million of dollars to put up for like, um, like a hackathon or should probably look for some details, but I see what you're saying, like putting yeah. it into other projects. Um, but I believe that like they themselves can't access like, that huge amount of money that they pulled together in that like yeah. treasury, so to speak. Yeah. It's it's kind of confusing because there's like value in seeing like how much money a company has accrued there. Um, and they can't touch it for themselves, which um, but then they can use it for other, you know, which makes sense if you're a nonprofit, I think. Um, but it's just uh how do you use and you know get that money working for you if it's a little bit more difficult to uh to access and and utilize but um I, I see what you're saying because like that's it just sounds similar to what they're doing i could totally be misinterpreting it though yeah oh um so like kind of going off of the, uh, the governance or or things like that um like um you know as a governance holder obviously you you know you hold amp uh, i think i think it's important that everyone in, who has amp has um you know a platform or voice to like contribute or speak on that's just my own opinion yeah. it doesn't matter if you have one or 500 million um you know if you're contributing to the project or if like you believe in if you're a holder you technically should have a say like if everything was built into a smart contract you know it would recognize an amp holder you have this token you have a right to to do whatever yeah. um but do you have like any like comments or concerns or anything and it doesn't have to be uh, governance related but that like you feel should be addressed by the team or the community or anything like that at this time at this time i don't well yeah i don't think at this time um because we've nothing really too tangible to talk about yeah. i think i think once we launch mainnet launch the white paper mm -hmm. and tyler said he's got sort of 20 odd blogs that he's been working on um that'll get released whether that's all at once or drips and drabs i don't know mm -hmm. um i think community wise i think we should perhaps be allowed to spread that a bit more if you know what i mean uh, i see see other other projects that yes you know community members say x y and z but then the main sort of twitter account will um bring out information on a regular basis mm -hmm. um it might not even be pertaining to what's actually going on you know i see a lot that talk about other projects and how they align and things like that you know perhaps move towards that sort of goal um that it's a bit more i understand why there isn't much vocality at the moment um but i think once launched yeah that's when you need to start shouting from the rooftops mm -hmm. you know we're here this is what we do kind of like that digest that they they released last night something like that yeah i don't read through that but that's fine that's one big sort of thing that drops every couple of months but um just to keep i know in the past i think somebody started sort of tweeting something every day it's with fine. regards to regards to our token and ampere um it carried on for a week or two and then it sort of died off. I, I assume everyone got, you know, you get busy with other stuff, don't you? <laughs> so, mm. you know, things get pushed to one side. Would you rather tweet about something that happened six months ago or would you rather get your work done? <laughs> I don't know which I'd rather do. Do you know what I mean? It's, uh, it, it is understandable. Yeah, I think a bit more, a bit more vocality. Uh, sing your own praises. Yeah. Yeah. Do it that way. You know, it doesn't have to be one of the core mem team members that does it. You know, perhaps they could um, help or, you know, I would say sign off, but agree that things can be posted. But yeah, a bit more, bit more onus on what Ampere actually is. Because there's still a lot, of, there's a lot of confusion even in the com community. But, um, you know, once, once things are released, I think just keep the knowledge flowing, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we need some salesmen, <laughs> shall we say? I mean, not so, you know, not, not not the hard sell, but yeah, marketing. That's it, I suppose, rather than sales. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think that's like the one of the big reasons they separated um, uh, from Flexa being like um, a private company. And from my understanding, is just that now they're actually able to market a lot more without like being under the scrutiny of the sec and uh 
like, oh, you're marketing a crypto project. You're not allowed to do that. Yeah. You're going to be under our radar now. So I think that's totally, I can totally appreciate your viewpoint too, because it's like they, they started doing something once, they stopped doing it. I like to see that again, especially like with this new clean slate of, um, you know, this particular use case or project that you know, yeah. spawned from Flex a bit. You know, you want to see that and you want to you want to be able to hear what's going on and you want a little bit more of a fluid update with things going on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think everyone could appreciate that. Like, I don't think it matters what side of the, you know, like if you like the project or hate it or if like you're negative or positive, I think everyone would would come together and sing Kumbaya over that for sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, yeah, I mean, this isn't me saying you must do this, you must get more marketing. Oh, no, no, it's no, just, it's just, yeah, it's just. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. This is good. I love hearing, like, um, you know, like, like I want to know, like, also like, how you feel, what you want to see from the, the projects, whether it's Flexa or Ampera, the next, like, three to five years, or, you know, what would you like to see more of, or, like, um, what areas of industry would you like to see them get their hands into, um you know like are you it's it's hard to say like if mm -hmm. you know you're happy with what they're doing now because it's hard to know what they're doing now right um oh well, i mean yeah i mean i'm happy with like i say with with flex i know a lot of people are sort of seeing it at face value that they've sort of switched off and they're not doing anything and I, I mean that's not the case i don't for one minute think that's the case i mm -hmm. try to sort of read between the lines of what who they're talking to like these little conferences that they go to like Trev or Michelle or whoever that's not it's not a crypto conference it has nothing to do with crypto really it's but it it's what they're trying to be so that that you know gives me confidence you know people that they've got on board or, you know the legal side the accounting side you know <laughs> me being a, an accounting geek it was like oh they've hired an accountant to do x y and z yeah, that's definitely a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but that's just me. Yeah, you know, we've not got some sort of solidity engineers and devs and things. It's like, well, they've probably got the product built. They've probably got some tweets that they might need to do here, then, you know, a few other places. But once you get going, you know, I'm sure what's the big banks in, in Bank of America, I'm sure they don't have 60% devs, <laughs> you know, they've probably got a small team somewhere and the rest of the people are working on actually getting cash from A to B and, and everything else. So, um, I mean, going forward, you know, if they could hit small amounts of external wallets within the next sort of three to six months, you know, that, that'd be, I'd be happy with that. Again, as we were talking before, it's not the volume, it's, just seeing what happens with another thing yeah um then beyond that yeah i mean if they could get rolling into non-crypto digital assets should we say um so like rewards and you know even if it's just your bank accounts or you know my bank accounts now i don't you know sometimes we got a bank card i'm like i don't, I don't know <laughs> yeah i've probably got one somewhere i don't use it i just use my phone I'm just bing 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 all right, sometimes if it's more than a hundred pounds in this country, you can't do that. But mm. um, I mean, you know, most of the time, you know, you, you're paying like 60, 60 pounds or that's it. You just, I very rarely take my wallet out, to be honest. It's just my phone. Um, so, and I, like I say, they they probably came out a bit early. So if you think when Flex was, what was it, 18? 19 they're probably thinking about it a lot longer before then when it came out with all their information people were like oh well, that's not gonna happen this isn't gonna happen now you look at it now what's happening now well you know the stable coin spending and everything else and everything being digital i mean the pandemic changed the way we do a lot of things anyway you know that brought qr codes just went everything was qr codes when that's kind of accelerated it so there were probably three or four years too early but they're not because if you've done the three, four, five years work, you know, somebody came in now, right, we're going to do a digital payment rail because that's what's happening. You know, you kind of foreseeing what's coming. So I think that they're, they're kind of well ahead of the curve there. So yeah, I'm very happy with what they're doing. Um, and period, I'm not, 
I kind of understand what they're what they're trying to do. Um, once we see everything, then yeah, <laughs> I'll understand it a lot more. I yeah. don't really want to say, oh, it's this, that, that. You know, there's some 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 folks on uh, Discord who are a lot more knowledgeable than I I ever will be. Um, that sort of try and explain it. I'm like, oh yeah, 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 I get that, I get that. No, I, get that. I, I do. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, but I, I don't know. Yeah, once I read through everything, then yeah, I can probably condense it into into an easy, easily digestible thing to tell other people. But yeah, and I think that's what we need to do is like, you know, one can go off and perhaps do their own little info, 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 info things to, to spread around. Uh, we could always cross check them and just go, yeah, that's not quite right. Or yeah, actually might be better if you say that and just, yeah, just help each other out doing it that way. Then we can spread that out. Um, obviously I don't have that many contacts in the DeFi world, to be honest. Probably isn't a lot less than than you guys over there. We don't we don't get many many uh, crypto conferences in north northern England. <laughs> yeah, like uh, do um, I mean this is going to just sound very like closed minded or out of loop. I just I'm very unaware of like I guess uh, the the daily life thing. Like I didn't understand until you you know you just reinforced what um, Tyler is kind of talking about at the conference too, which is like it's so easy to do this stuff in Europe, and for some reason there's just so many um or like uk england uh there's just so many roblox here for us um so i'm just like uh i guess i'm curious about like you know like you said there's there's hardly ever any type of crypto conference is this um kind of there is in there is in london oh, okay. yeah london <laughs> it's, so too, it's too 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 much effort to get there and back <laughs> it's probably easier to fly to atlanta <laughs> Oh gosh! <laughs> no, nah, it's just you know, it's, you have so there's so many so many things in the way sometimes when you're trying to get there. Well, the trains aren't working. I wouldn't I wouldn't drive there. It's just they hate motorists in London, so mm. <laughs> it's one of those places you just don't drive your car. Sure. Uh, but yeah, no, I think it's uh, it's just me being in in England. We have a north south divide, so yeah northerners and southerners <laughs> it's like yeah we don't want to go south and people in the south go no we don't want to go north <laughs> well, it's a bit, a bit of tongue in cheek <laughs> but yeah i mean if, if I, mean, I don't know once this gets going if they want to do stuff over in the uk you know more than uh more than happy to to help with with any anything like that um you know, if, if, if it's just community, sort of rally some troops. I don't know if any, any, any you to, guys um, could, would could come over from, from the States. Uh, but I'll have to connect you with, like, a few guys that are over there um, that have, have reached out, um, you know, and I didn't I didn't really know that they were, they were over on that side of the pond either um, until a few days ago. And, and they're, you know, individually, like, they're very excited. They're trying to come up with things that they could do to like, they're like participating in that little contest thing or whatever and trying to come yeah. up with some ideas. And um, so it's it's cool that there's, you know, I'm finding more and more like how diverse our, our community actually is in the- Yeah, in yeah no, there's quite a few. There's a few that I know that are from the UK. I don't, like I said, I don't, I'm not huge on on Twitter, I do post a few bits. I do to speak to odd people here and there. But... In regards to to values, like um, I think this might be a good one to like kind of end on or or you know touch on before closing. Yeah, I think like being at this conference made me think about what it meant to be like a a, a decentralized community. What it meant to like be a governance token holder. Um, I don't know if you listened to the the Levi and I talked the other day, but I yeah, I'm like what it meant for other communities. And, um, you know, there's, for me, there's a bit of a contrast with like, you know, how we would interact with each other or um, towards the project, I guess, more specifically like sentiment there. Um, but uh, I think something, and this is just my own opinion, like finding kind of like values um, important to you as a person um, and how that might translate to like what you would expect or want of like, values of the projects whether it's flexa or impera um i don't know if you if you thought about that too too much but uh, just curious um, no i mean i think if people are upfront and honest uh that's that's on every side really you know like us, us community members the 
um, core team. And yeah, I mean, I suppose Lampere is a slightly different flexor. You know, I wouldn't expect Trev to come on once a week and tell us what's going on. It's uh, it's kind of that, I don't want to use the term that ship sailed, but I'm quite happy in my head that Flexor is now parked there. Mm. They will tell us, they will show us what they've done when they've done it. You know, no more. There's not that many more things coming out of there. And then it, it's over there. I know it's there. It will come when it comes. I'm not annoyed that we're not hearing anything because I know what the, they're trying to do. Um, but yeah, like I say, you know, like from the Empire side, I know they, they, the folks on the core team are busy doing what they're doing. And they do pop their heads up on a, well, a semi-regular basis and sort of let us know what's going on. Um, but yeah, just just to be honest um, with what's going on, I think that's that's one of the main things. Um, communication and transparency are... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if somebody came out and told me something had gone wrong, I don't mind, as long as they told me. Then we can perhaps kind of, you know, like where I work as well, if, if, something's, if something's gone wrong, it's gone wrong, and you just kind of own up to it. Or if something's not right, we're not going to do that by that time because of X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. We didn't see this happening. You know, I've worked in, you know, we've probably done, in my lifetime, yeah. I've probably done about 30 software releases. And there's two ways of doing it. You either hit it, hit, hit your date and release a patch or wait a bit and release a better product. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's it. So that's, you know, uh, you very rarely get to the date and have it working. Yeah. If you do, then, you know, you're a lot better, better than the teams I've worked with. <laughs> um, so if it, if it goes back a month because they've got to do X, Y, and Z, the audit might have found something. That's fine. Just say, yeah, there's a slight issue, but. Yeah, we're gonna get it fixed. No problem. Sure. No, no yeah. brainer. Yeah, that sounds very reasonable. Like, um, yeah, just communication, the uh, transparency, and then like that little piece at the end, which like kind of smooths everything over, which is just like a little bit maybe what I'm hearing. Maybe I'm thinking like a little bit of accountability. Like, hey, sorry. Like, yeah, we're working on it. We're working through it. Please be patient with us. We'll get there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I mean accountability. Um, I don't like I say I don't expect you know <laughs> not like some of these firms where you have to you know <laughs> stand up with your head bowed in shame. It's not that's not <laughs> the, the accountability I'm on about. I'm just like, you know what, yeah. You know, we're we're doing something nobody's ever done before. It's right at the edge of what people are used to and you know, things are gonna slip. So that's fine. I'm 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 not bothered. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I know some of some other people are on one time sheets or whatever. If somebody put I'm like, what? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not one of those people. And just yeah, just let it grow and appreciate when it does grow. You know, try to help when it doesn't. You know, all right. We're just we were just people who bought a token. You know, if you bought shares in, unless you were shorting them, if you bought shares in a. Fortune 500 company, you wouldn't buy a million dollars worth of shares and then go out shouting from the rooftops how bad they are, would you? <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Unless, like I say, unless you were shorting them, but oh no, that's just come online on Tim Binance. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, just uh, yeah, a bit of honesty, a um, bit of respect for, uh, I think, respect for other projects and other companies. We've had this uh, Coinbase merchant. Um, B2B payment type thing that came out the other day, which mm -hmm. is fine and it does what it does and you know if you look back to when, oh, I mean this is probably a few years before Flexor was launched, that that's what Brian was looking at was the payments stuff that's one of the ways that they can do it which is great, it's all on chain happy days, yeah I'm not bothered about that you know Flex is something completely different well, it's not, it's still payments, but how they're approaching it is completely different. Um, some people have come out and sort of said, oh, well, yeah, you know, it's not the same and it's X, Y, and Z. And, you know, it's great to have, have competition. Um, I've seen others that have been slating it and sort of acting the teams in on Twitch. And I'm like, I'm not really into that, to be honest. <laughs> it's, yeah, 
they're doing their thing, they're doing ours. So what? <laughs> you know, it's not it's not it's not a sports team. <laughs> it was business. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I think it's it's like right kind of you hit the nail on your head. I think in this space, like with the industry and just like the the sentiment of um, government authority, at least here in the U.S., I think like across the way is there's been a little bit more um, more grace upon the innovators, so to yeah. speak, given yeah. the recent times. Yeah. Yeah, we seem to be getting the act together in the UK. There's a few bits, a few hurdles. We've had a load of new stuff come through. Like, so now if I've got Gemini or Coinbase, we'll get hit with a load of stuff. If I if I transfer money in or out of any of those, or sort of Coinbase and Gemini, um, that are from, say, like my MetaMask. I, I don't know. I've not transferred it. It's only been going one way, but they might just think, they might already know that that is my wallet because I've transferred out to it. But say, say I set up a blank wallet and you sent me hundred thousand amp to that one, and then I transferred it back to my Gemini. Mm -hmm. I would need to then provide details of that wallet, who's who it belonged to. So mm -hmm. if I say it's mine, then fair enough. Then yeah. So they are trying to. It, it it's not it's a bit intrusive but I, to be honest i don't mind i'm not one of these who oh i don't want anyone to see x y and z and mm. but that's just me you know yeah. different people are different so no i totally i totally get that um because like when i was at the conference i i was listening to you know i was having this conversation with like the and i kind of touched on this with levi but like that uh i think his name was dylan um Christy, I believe, um, and he's at FedEx and he's working with like the Home on Defense right now and FedEx trying to figure out like how to essentially like put a um, put a person into the into the blockchain um, so that like when they enter the country, you don't need like a passport or like a green yeah. card or a visa or anything like that. You're just going to get a green light or a red light. Like, yeah. you know, same thing with like uh, receiving a package. Like, so like if you're getting a shirt or like a CD or something from yeah. in the U S or whatever. Um, and then you get that, that package goes through customs. Apparently like our, our customs does not um, identify or verify who that's coming to or like where that's coming from at all period. Yeah. So like that particular broken system, now they want to like be able to uh, put everyone who's sending something coming in or out into the blockchain so that when it goes through customs, they can either just like X-nay it or, uh, you know, let it go through green or red light it. And, you know, just like you said right now, providing those details of whoever's sending what and, um, you know, things of that nature could be a bit, you know, depending on which side you're on, it could be like, oh, this is great. Like we're getting a little bit more security, um, you know, while sacrificing privacy, or you might be on the other side where it's like, no, privacy is really important if that means less, um, you know, Guarantee. Yeah. safety or security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's fine balance, isn't it, sometimes? Like, say, That's just like you said, you know, it's like they'll turn on when they need to turn on, but if they do it, like that's, I think that's like the real roadblock is like these, you know, the people that the, that are in these companies or, you know, that maybe Flex is trying to partner with or or FedEx, you know, is, you know, or UPS or any type of parcel carrier or, um, you know, delivery logistics company. Like they're probably thinking like, yeah, we want to do this, but we don't want to do it right away because it's going to cost us this much or whatever, but. I think when it turns on, if it's not, you know, a slow transition, it's going to be uh, like those other competitors might try to come in really fast and potentially like not do it the best way that they could because they want to like be a part of that first. So like with the wallets, with like Nighthawk coming out, like it's a great step. Um, it shouldn't be like, like the end result because to your point, like we would ideally, I think, which has been expressed about the whole 1% only being crypto asset yeah. transactions. Like, you know, big goal should be with banks and financial institutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but well, um, all it has what, the water somehow. Rob Lechner, um, what's his new company called? Your know, Compound is the new company to bring oh, real world, world. Yeah, Robert's 
bring in the real world assets on chain mm-hmm. super state yeah so that's you know if you bring in a lot more stocks and real world assets on on chain then you know you've got more digital stuff so and this is the other thing about you know like the competitors that we see is they're mainly focused on the crypto side flexor is and if you know if what what had been said in the past that crypto is only a small percentage then yeah that's fine yeah it's like yeah we can do crypto but this is what we really want to be doing mm-hmm. um, and i think there's a lot there's a lot more there that nobody knows anything about to be honest <laughs> yeah absolutely uh, which is why we don't hear a lot from them you know the less you speak the less you can give away <laughs> yeah they're, they're trying to bake the whole cake not just grab a slice of it yeah somewhere. <laughs> yeah yeah definitely cool right i think it's getting a bit late for you and i need to get off in about a few minutes so oh yeah no, no, this is, I feel free this is great um this feel free to ask me in a, in a, yeah well, well uh uh let you get some cape are you actually are you up early or have you not gone gone to sleep yet <laughs> No, I took a I took a nap. I'll say, yeah, a power nap. A power nap. <laughs> All right, great stuff. But thank you right. so much, uh, Mr. Stude. This has been really, really, yeah. very nice. Um, I appreciate the time. Great stuff.